A new report is looking at the trends from Google searches around recent mass shootings. According to Axios, last weekend's Google searches for the shooting in El Paso surged more than any other recent attack. But people tend to move on pretty quickly. The high interest on Google only tends to last about two to three weeks. For more on this, we're joined by Axios Media reporter Sarah Fisher, who wrote the report. So, uh, Sarah, it's a really fascinating report that you've got there. Explain what you found and how does Google measure interest levels? Yeah, that's exactly right. It's all about interest levels. So how many inputs are they getting into their search engine for people that are looking for more information around this topic? If they're getting a ton of interest, it's going to be higher, closer to 100. 100 means it's getting the most interest that a topic would get historically within Google's search. If it's a zero, it's getting very little interest. Now, historically, we've had some pretty big events with search interests. I mean, if you think about things like 9-11 or if you think about the day that Osama bin Laden was killed. Those types of events are going to be up at 100. So it makes sense that some of these shootings are only closer to the number five. And we've seen that historically, most shootings get a ton of attention, maybe a little bit higher than five, in the first few days or hours when the news breaks. But after, it seems to fall. What we found with El Paso, however, is that search interest was way up, not just the day of and the day after, but the next following few days. And that's something that we haven't quite seen over the past past few years when we've had so many of these horrible, tragic mass shootings. So why do you suppose people lose interest so fast, typically, you know, I know not with the El Paso one, but typically they lose interest in these stories? Well, I think, one, they're happening so commonly that mm. people just, quite frankly, uh, are learning to move on through the news cycle whenever these things happen. It's sort of the sense is, we talked to a psychologist, you know, okay, we've seen it happen before and it's probably going to happen again. One of the reasons why you see people really hook onto certain news stories is because they want to see active change done about it. With the case of Sandy Hook, for example, we saw a little bit more prolonged interest in that story. And I think part of the reason is because there were kids that were targeted in that shooting specifically. And I think there was a lot of activist calls to do something about gun control in the wake of that shooting that we hadn't really seen in shootings prior. And so I think people at this point are saturated with the news about mass shootings. But what's really going to keen, you know, keep them a little bit more interested is if we can shift the conversation more towards what's next. What are we actually doing about it? Uh, so now the next thing is to see what are we actually doing about it? Are we going to pass bills, et cetera? So you also found that the bigger shooting events are loosely correlated with more search interests. Explain what you mean. Yeah, so the, really the shooting events where there are just more people who pass away, unfortunately. And I mean, we saw that this past weekend. El Paso had a ton of uh, interest, while what happened in Dayton had a little bit less. Um, another thing that we found that, you know, we didn't really write so much in the report is that, going back to the kids thing, when there's a specific storyline that shines through, that has a really humanitarian, uh, you know, subject or pulls at the heartstrings, those stories tend to do really well. Uh, you heard about, you know, two weeks ago, there was a mother and a father who sort of uh, laid and protected themselves to save their child. That story was getting a ton of pickup on social media. And so I think that the stories where there are more people that very unfortunately pass away tend to get a little bit more attention. And the stories that sort of have a through line that tugs at the heartstrings also tend to get a little bit more attention. So you talk about sort of where does the conversation go beyond the shooting. What about other search terms like maybe gun control? Yes, so you see a lot more search terms around preventative measures, um, background checks, gun control, particularly, as I mentioned before, where kids are involved. Um, I also think that we saw an uptick in those in response to the last round of shootings, simply because we had two twice in a row, which made, I think, the public feel like this was less of an isolated incident and more of a pattern that needed to be addressed societally. But, you know, if we just zoom out, let's say a look at where we're at today, those shootings that happened two weeks ago are still being resonated in the media, but we've also mostly moved on. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that we've lost, you know, almost two dozen people. And now today, the big topic of conversation is Joe Biden's gaffes or it's the Chinese trade war. I mean, the news cycle has just moved so fast. And to that point, Axios did a study, we link out to it in that piece, that shows that on average during the Trump administration, most stories only last for about seven days. I think it's just all comes down to the fact that our attention spans are shorter, and it's just a really 
crazy news environment these I, days. I think it's so interesting because, you know, as we sit here on the desk, we always try to determine, like, what will be the key issues in this campaign. And we're watching it sort of evolve and, you know, race issues pop up. And, and when these back-to-back -back shootings happen, I wondered, would gun control become a main sort of conversation point for this campaign? And I mean, very quickly, it seems to be evaporating. It feels as if uh, this, for the first time in a long time, will be a major campaign issue. Poll after poll after poll shows the majority of Americans want some kind of sensible gun legislation. But with such a long p period of campaigning, if, we, if there isn't another shooting, and hopefully there will not be another one, but if there isn't, you know, are we going to see this, what, what, what your report is suggesting is that people are really, really interested shortly after the shooting, but that interest does not last. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, so I guess the question becomes for you, Sarah, what does it mean politically? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the most important question here, because what we need to understand is what is the action that's going to be taken to make sure this doesn't happen again. What I've seen throughout this campaign, look, we've had two big Democratic debates, is that when there is a viral moment that shines through in the debates, it picks up energy around that issue. So we saw this with the Kamala Harris and Joe Biden exchange on race. It really brought race to the forefront of this debate. When Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, you know, were perceived as owning the debate last time, we're talking a lot about Medicare for all, health care upticked as a main issue of this debate. So what I would look for is that the next debates in September, does someone bring it up and create a viral moment out of it? Does someone create a media moment that everyone can sort of grasp onto and reignites the news cycle around this? I think that's the way that you're going to see this ignite in 2020. As far as what does this mean politically, you know, obviously Congress has not really done anything at this point uh, to ensure that this is not going to happen again through new laws or legislation. Legislation, but I think if I take a you know 10,000 foot view, I looked at that chart when we were making it. You know, this is data over the past 10 years. The conversation on Capitol Hill and in regulatory industri industries here in the uh, in the Capitol, I'm here in Washington. It has changed, and it has gotten a lot more intense about what to do about gun control. And I would imagine that politically, every time there's a shooting like this, there is going to be a little bit more pressure in Washington to actually and finally do something about it. All right, Sarah Fisher, thank you very much. Thank you.